So I welcome uh, everyone for uh, day two technical session four. So yesterday we had two jam-packed sessions. So the sessions were uh, like a great success. So the two sessions that we had organized yesterday, one was moderated by Dr. C. D. Mai, which was on food technologies in food processing sec uh, sector, and we discussed its status and needs. And the next section that we had organized was uh, uh, moderated by Dr. K. S. M. S. Raghav Rao, who is the director of C. F. T. R. I. And uh, again, it was a jam-packed sessions, and the topic that we had discussed was new R and D paradigms in food processing sector. And the third sector again, which uh, you know we get the maximum participation was for uh, supply chain management. This uh, uh, this particular session was uh, moderated by Dr. Sarvanan Raj. He is director uh, agriculture extension manage. So again, we had good number of participation in that session. So with uh, new day, second day, we are starting with technical session four, which is new technologies, food losses and wastages. This session will be moderated by Mr. P. L. Call. Mr. P. L. Call uh, is a past president of IFPA. So I now request Mr. P. L. Call to uh, take over the session and introduce yourself and your uh, speakers. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this great session. Thanks to AgroVision for organizing this beautiful webinar of two days. I had the pleasure of participating in all the sessions yesterday. It was very, very well done. Well, I am. Uh, I feel greatly pleased and privileged to have a panel of great speakers, esteemed, uh, very, very learned speakers, with. Dr. Vasudevapa in the lead. We have been uh, together on many seminars together. And we know we have depth of knowledge from him. Every time we uh, are able to understand and learn new avenues. Dr. Nachiket Kotwaliwale, Director CFTR, SIFTI, sorry, CIFET. I have had a great uh, you know, relationship with CIFET, but I think he must have recently joined or about a year, two years back. CIFET, as we know, is, uh, has done a UMN job. They are doing an excellent job. And they were the first in the country to quantify the food losses. Right? Uh, and I don't know if they have updated it, but we have the updated version from the Ministry of Food Processing Industry. So until then, it was only an off-the-cuff you know, figure given by Dr. Swaminathan many, many decades back. But then uh, there was, uh, you know, that we used to add the index adding up every year, but it was CIFET who quantified. Uh, they, they did an overall uh, countrywide survey and uh, quantified the losses, which data we still have with us. We have uh, Mr. Ravindra Dolare also with us from ECOZEN. ECOZEN is a, is a very, very, uh, you know, that, uh, forward looking company started by three iit graduates as startups if i am correct dr mr devender gupta pratik singhal and vivek pandey and they have come out with some innovative ideas like eco frost solar based you know, uh, this uh, solar based uh, cold storages solar based solar pumps and so on and so forth and uh, it's a great thing when uh, youngsters from institutes of excellence like uh, NIF can come out and start on their own, beaming with confidence that they can meet success. It's a great thing for the country, for the future of food processing industry as such. Uh, I hope Mr. Kishore Rawale has also joined. Has he joined? Mr. Yes, Rawale? He has joined. Yes. Okay. Yes. He's from, uh, he is the in charge of fresh export from Jan Farm Fresh Foods Limited. The country doesn't need introduction to Jan Farm, Jan Irrigation System, Jan Farm Food. They have done an excellent job. My hats off to Mr. The visionary, visionary, great Mr. Bawari Lal Jan, who started this company, looking at the future. Now, if you see, if the same model is emulated by many other corporate sectors. See where the country is going to march forward in the world. By now, by now they have um, they handle one lakh seventy five thousand tons of mango. Already. 
They handled 200,000 metric tons of onion and vegetables, 40,000 tons of banana, and 10,000 metric tons of contract farming they are doing. And they have 12,000 associates, 33 manufacturing plants, with turnover of 11,000 crores by now. So it's the greatest thing, particularly on the subject matter which we are going to discuss today. That is how to prevent food losses. So coming back to this subject, I want to share some interesting data with you. You see, harvest, I look at the global scenario. Harvest and post-harvest losses in global scenario as per the FAO figures is 1.70 billion metric tons, colossal figure all over the world. It is food wasted and lost, 1.70 billion metric tons. And it is not only food loss. With that food loss, we have economic loss, which is estimated at $1 trillion because of this. We have environmental loss, which is estimated at $700 billion. We have social loss, estimated at $900 billion. What is this environmental loss? It is not food loss only. For example, I tell you, for Producing one kg of wheat, we use 1,500 liters of water, 1,500 kg of water. So there's a loss if we lose one kg of wheat. One, for one kg of rice, we have to need, we need 3,500 kg of water. So if we lose that one kg, see what loss and water is anyway now scarce all over the world. So we have to take care of. Now, land loss. We have utilized so much of land for producing this food. Then there is manpower loss, how much manpower we have used for producing this food. So it is overall loss, it is not only food loss, we have to see in totality what this loss means. So this is the loss, harvest and post-harvest loss. But far more colossal figures is food wastage. Food, which, we are, which is ready to eat, food. Food Wastage Index Report of 2021, prepared by UNER, means UN Environmental Program, in 2019. Food waste worldwide is 931 million metric tons. 931 metric tons. What it comes from, that is household service, household waste is about 61%. Food services waste means restaurants and tabas and all that is 26%. And from retail loss, it is 13%. The interesting figure that emerges out from the same report is, if this total quantity of food is loaded in 40 metric tons or 40 metric ton trucks, you need 23 million trucks. And if you put them bumper to bumper, they will circle the globe, they will circle this earth seven times. So that is the loss. But what is the difference between initial loss and this loss is that initial loss, food loss, means you, the farmers lose, the consumers lose, and for the ready to food loss, which I have told you just now, colossal figures, this man, the country loses. This, if we were able to harness, collect this food, it would have reduced the hunger of the world, which is at the moment about 11% of total food world population. The global hunger at the moment is estimated at 11% worldwide of the total population. That means 858 million people all over the world suffer from hunger. Now, if we come to our own Indian scenario, in India, 70, India at the moment in global hunger index stands at 72 number out of 113 countries. So it is shameful. It is shameful when we produce so much of food, so much of food, why should a population of our country suffer from hunger? Means we have to prevent these losses somehow or the other. In India, we have 14% of the children suffering from malnutrition. Infant mortality is highest in the world in number, 28 per thousand. 
stunted children 37.4 percent below the age of four year five years wasted children 17 percent now you can imagine this is this is shameful if we are able to save this wastage and forward this wastage to these poor malnutrition population of the country see what good we are going to do for this country and 200 million people means 20 crore people in india are facing hunger and even at at present standards so the relevance of the topic today is not only of national importance it is of global importance as well but if we have to care for our country and we have got to take advantages we have got to understand this this scourge faced by the country and we have to collect all technological means technological means to stop this somehow for last ever since now i am in food business food engineering business for last 35 years and every every year twice thrice four times we hold seminars and discuss these things why it takes 40 years that we are not able to come out of this terrible phenomena means that we gather together we discuss we discuss technology issues we have people we have uh, technocrats stalwarts like uh, dr vasudevapa and everybody we discuss among ourselves and when there are they, we invite normally we invite mantris and bureaucrats to inaugurate every time after 10 minutes mantri says i have been called by the parliament there's a question our going going on so i am going there immediately after 10 15 minutes of that this honorable secretary says oh i have been called by him. so oh, we keep on discussing among ourselves and of course we have the directive to forward the findings of the seminar or webinar to us we'll take the action but who bothers they are so busy people and the policies that emerge out of them are the same what they think they are right what technocrats say i don't think if they had the if they had the intention to do it <laughs> what we have done then we would have come out of this problem now what kind of wastages now let us come to the we are talking about the wastages today which come from which are come from farming at post harvest post harvest right because of these wastages our farmers are suffering our consumers are suffering and the whole chain is suffering we don't discuss at the moment of the food ready to eat food losses because this is our concern at the moment we have to look after farmers now there are two kinds of foods one is perishable that is fruits and vegetables milk poultry livestock and fish that's then there are non perishable they also suffer from losses that sifet will bear with us they also suffer from about 6 to 10% loss why because it is eaten by non perishables are eaten by rodents they suffer from uh, insects they suffer from wastages the storages are open in the mostly in the open so it gets lost birds eat them birds shit on them so they become inedible but perishables perishables we have discussed a few number of times we need to support our supply chain collect collection from farmers post harvest management immediately it should go to the cold storage surplus show should be should be shifted immediately to uh, markets of demand and it should go to processing centers we have to process it for value addition and all these things are all very well known so how do we implement uh, these systems and what the country should do. What do we recommend today once again? What is the possibility? Now, these technologies again, they are based on, they are product to product oriented. For example, it is easy to store apple without affecting its natural properties for seven to eight months under controlled atmosphere, cold storages. But same is not true for tomatoes. Even in controlled atmosphere cold storage, they are like for maybe six weeks maximum. So the prevention of losses, cold storages and handling losses, they depend on the technology, depends on product to product. 
Similarly in fruits, for example, apple, if it is in controlled atmosphere, cold storage, it remains far fresh for seven to eight months. But it is not true for stone fruits like apple, like peach, plum, uh, this apricot, cherry. Cherry is short lived, 10, 15, 20 days total farming period, harvesting period, lychee. So all these technologies are dependent on product to product, and they are dependent on place to place. What is applicable at one place is not applicable to other place. I am at the moment getting one uh, technology foresight study done for TIFAC. On uh, our, our first focus is on Northeast. So Northeast, it is a difficult situation. The vegetables and fruits are grown on mountains. So the collection system, collect post harvest system, and uh, transportation system has to be totally different, technologically different. What is applicable on planes? So it is product to product base. It is place to place base. It is on the infrastructure base. What is the infrastructure? So why not? Why is it not happening? Is it because entrepreneurs from corporate sector, entrepreneurs are from corporate sector, etc., are not coming forward to emulate what Jan Irrigation has done? I am very happy at the moment. I share with all my uh, esteemed speakers today. I am very happy that the new generation of startups have started coming. I have groomed up two startups from institutes of management. One has gone to Kodagad in Shimla. They have set up a unit there and doing, doing very well, involving local labor and local fruit, producing high-tech jams and all that, and doing well. Another from IIT, IIT um, IIM Ahmedabad, two students have gone to Northeast. They have set up the unit there, processing ginger, collecting from farmers, having post-harvest management, processing in uh, Siliguri and Skim. And now by now they are established. But I want to convey to the policymakers how these youngsters have suffered. They say finance is available. They have been running from pillar to post to every bank. And it took them two years to convince some bank who have financed them. So banks are apathetic to be generous on awarding the loan. Second is the financial constraints are still there. Procedural delays. Procedural delays are there. So many compliances are there. I say there is in food processing also. I say, I share with you my own experience. There are unease of doing business, rather ease of doing business, even persisting today. So all policymakers, my um, appeal to policymakers is, please discuss with us. We will tell you one by one. What are the hindrances? Why this food processing is not growing the way we had thought of, the way our new government in, when it came into power in 19, 2014, uh, it had big plans why they are not, you know, that uh, it is not happening. So with these words, with these words, I don't want to spend more time. Let us hear from the esteemed learned speakers. I start with you, Dr. Vasudev Bapa. And please share with us whether I have been right, I have been wrong. Actually, what is the way forward? How do we go? Uh, or why it is not happening? What we plan, what we suggest, what we recommend, why it is not happening? Why the, it is not taking off from the ground? Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, very good morning to Kohl Sir. Always it's a pleasure to listen to you on uh, many of uh, the issues which you speak through experience. Of course, I have my good friend also, Dr. Najiket, and uh, probably Audesh Singh, who are also the panelists. And probably this is one thing which I would say is a very important topic, because I know we have been producing huge quantity of food. Is it being used? Or is it being properly processed or properly stored? I think these are the issues which otherwise would lead to a lot of wastage because I know we are still growing in this direction. Probably if you look at the global availability of food for consumption, it is something like 5.3 billion tons, huge. But anyway, as was said by, you know, Dr. Kolsa, I think, you know, as per the UNEP 
estimates it is 931 million tons which amounts to 17 percent of the food that is available is wasted which as he said rightly it is and i was surprised to see that households contribute to a major extent for the food loss so that means uh, if you look at this food loss and the loss of food globally which i would say is almost equivalent to what we produce in india see we are a country with say about 900 million tons of food production so almost it is equal to that i think you know, that's where probably we need to really retrospect ourselves otherwise it becomes very very difficult in the sense of course globally even if you look at the per capita you know level of wastage it is around 121 kgs and out of which again 75 percent is wasted through households so that means we are not properly storing in the house nor utilizing it nor i would say it is distributed to the people who are really required and who require food i think that's where i think we are at a very big uh, i would say uh, bad end and uh, of course among the south asian countries probably i think india is the country which uh, loses not much of food compared to them but individually it may be less but our population is huge so that means we are number one among Southeast Asia, losing a lot of food that is produced, which, are, which accounts to something like about 50 kg per capita, compared to maybe 82 kgs in Afghanistan or 79 kg in Nepal, 76 in Sri Lanka, even in Bangladesh it is 65 kg. That means the food that is produced, a lot of it is wasted and which otherwise would have been used properly. And of course, as per the FAO estimates, 690 million people are are in hunger as as was said the hunger index we stand at 70 72 but if you look at the whole population as per fao the whole world three billion people they are they cannot afford to get a healthy diet that means the huge uh, i would say <clears throat> almost one third of the people of the world are not, not getting the desired or the required food, which otherwise would have been you know, especially helpful in building their, I would say, the mental and physical health. And of course, household wastages, if you see, probably I was just surprised, this came in the newspaper, that UNEP report, and uh, the worst five in the whole world is Nigeria with 189 kg per capita, Rwanda, it's uh, 164, Greece, 142, Britain is, uh, Bahrain is 132 and Malta is 129 kgs. Even in G7 countries, there also the food wastage is not small. France is something like 85 kgs, Canada 79 kg, UK is 77 kgs, Germany 75 kgs, Italy is 67, Japan even, Japan, I thought Japan would be the lowest as far as the food wastage is concerned, but it is also 64 and USA it is 59. Compared to them, probably we are at a better position, but we need not pat our back on this because the population what we have is very huge. Probably that is the reason I always see how to reduce this wastage and uh, probably how to really you know, address the issue of hunger and malnutrition, which I would say is very prevalent in India. More than 25% of the population in India are suffering from hunger. And of course, malnutrition is very, very intense, especially among the women and children. This is something which we need to really be focusing. I know I don't want to talk much about, of course, uh, now Dr. Nachiket will be talking about his report because NIFET prepared the report way back in 2016 or 17, and that has been referred now and then by everybody. And uh, looking at, I would say, probably the loss, processing loss, especially in terms of the food grains and all that, they say it is it's about 1%. I know we always think food grains are, uh, they are non-perishables. No, it is not. It is, it is also perishable if it is not properly stored, if it is not properly, I would say, dried. And there will be a lot of other issues which will also create a lot of problem. Only thing we are worried or concerned is the horticulture, where the processing levels in horticulture is very, very poor. Though, if you look at the whole loss, it is around, if as per FAO, including, I would say, the, the, the agricultural production systems and the post-harvest storage handling, processing and the packaging, distribution, consumption, all put together, it is about 66%.
in India, that is huge. That means two thirds of the horticultural crop that we are producing, we are losing. So it should not happen like that. I think that's where we need to be look at looking at it very seriously. If you look at only the post harvest losses, may not be that alarming as compared to the world average of something like forty percent. So that's where I think you know there is a huge requirement of all of us to retrospect ourselves and to bring in some change in this direction, which can really help us to preserve more food, to you know, provide it to many people, process it, value add and see that even the waste is converted into a wealth. That's where is the concept today, which is being addressed every now and then. Of course, we know Gandhiji once said, to a man with an empty stomach, food is God. Even today, we all believe when you sit on the dining table, first we pay our pronouns to food and then we start eating. So that means food is always God for all of us. So food wasted, again, that means here, I would say, uh, maybe deceiving the God. So that's where I think you know, we need to look at and probably always we should make it a habit to put what is required on the plate rather than pouring everything and trying to waste later on. So that should not be the approach. Of course, as per the SDGs, I think you know now I said 40% is lost, even if we reduce it by 50% of it. So that means we will be at ease to maintain the whole population in the world without hunger. That is something which is a very, very, you know, good and required initiative we need to really look at. And the efforts, if you look at probably for uh, preventing the food loss and who are all the stakeholders, who are all the people who are to be involved in this, that is something which is very, very important. As we all know, it is, of course, the policymakers, we always blame as technocrats and the policymakers, they blame technocrats because we are not implementing. So these are the, the I would say, the tossing the ball game which always happens, probably I know each one need not blame each other, but all the same we should, as the girls have said, we should come together, try to understand and the bring in what is that really desired change that is really required in the whole system. Maybe I think another social functions, we have to be very cautious, reduce or limit the number of guests and prepare less food. Even if you go half a stomach, it doesn't matter, but always don't get the pride in wasting. That is something which I would say is very, very important. And another very important area where we are missing is the food safety and quality assurance infrastructure, which I would say is really thinly spread. That means this is one area where a lot of efforts are required. I know a lot of these, uh, you know, the funding is done by the government, especially the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, especially to create the infrastructure, which is essentially required, including, I would say, processing. And of course, there is the Ministry of uh, I would say the logistics, which is also creating a lot of uh, soon under FCI, Food Corporation in India. They are also creating a lot of infrastructure in terms of storage of food and providing the logistics or the cold chains and things like that. And of course, recovery and distribution of surplus food. This is something which we always never think because uh, always the surplus food means you give it to some cattle or give it to some, you know, just throw it on the street or on the roadside, things like that, it should not happen. So that is one thing which we have to really look at, of course, modifying the label, especially the label which we are putting on the food use by before, just before, no, best before, something like that. So that means the food is good, best before such and such a date, not the, you know, the expiry date. Oh, even that food also, you would say, with the expiry date also, a lot of food is wasted, which has been accounted very well nowadays. And of course, technological always, we may address these issues on, in many ways. Of course, there are many technological innovations which happen that I'll speak at the end, maybe. Other issues like the e chopal aggregation. I think this is what Dr. Paul said, Cole said, Anna Cole said aggregation of the wasted food or bring it together and make it into a value added food or distributed to the people who are in need and maybe all the food parks, which could be the mega food park, agro processing clusters, or any of the sort of uh, the food processing which is involved has to be supported in a big way. Cold chain value addition and the preservation infrastructure again is very, very important. Cold chain nowadays, I know people have understood the quality is dependent on right from the point of harvest till it reaches the consumer or till it reaches the consumer's plate. 
So that is something which we need to really look at. Of course, another very important area is zero energy cool chambers. <coughs> this is something, maybe the solar energy is something which we need to really tap, which otherwise available in plenty in India. So this is one area where we need to really put in a lot of effort. Otherwise, I know, always we have a reason that the power availability is very poor in rural areas. So that should not be the approach. Probably a big policy change is required in this direction, which I feel people are addressing it. That apart, of course, another very important area according to me is the consumer awareness. So this unless we do, probably I think, you know, we will not be addressing the, uh, the, the real crux of the problem. I think that's where probably consumer awareness, like all these social organizations, whatever we call NGOs, FPOs, or self-help groups, and things like that, they should take it on as a mission mode, an mission mode approach. And uh, probably to save food, share food, and share joy initiative. I think this is something which is very, very important. And of course, unwanted food to community food banks. I think this is slowly getting the importance today. So community food banks or some NGOs have started some food banks. They collect it from the city and then distribute it among the poor. I think you know, this is another big initiative. Probably as we grow and uh, once the quality of food is maintained, I think all these things are possible. Of course, organic food and uh, sustainable dining and all those things are also becoming important. The gaps, if you see probably, I know gaps are maybe the technical outreach we are, I would say, we, though we, as, as was said by Dr. Kalsa, we speak only in webinars, seminars, and things like that. And how many people will understand, especially are we reaching the real, I would say, the real stakeholders? That is something which is very, very important. And insufficient supply chain and logistics, this is again another very big gap, I would say. Mismatch between requirements and innovations. I know what is really required, are we innovating? Are we giving solutions through innovation? I think this is again on the technical institutions, which are uh, really working on all these issues. And of course, the important thing is the consumer awareness, which I would say is again, the topmost uh, important thing. And uh, if you look at the relevance to the Indian context, probably, I think you know, it is something like 670 lakh tons of food is wasted in India alone, which amounts to something like 92 or 93 or 95,000 crore rupees. So that is a huge loss for the Indian economy. And we are seventh in food wastage across the whole globe. So that is again, not to you know be very proud of. And then of course the 40% is the food that is wasted food as per the UNDP you know, estimates. And uh, if you look at the whole thing, probably the, again, the hunger index and all that, we are in a very, very bad shape. And I would even again say here, the stakeholders in food loss and wastage are like, could be the government, professional associations, maybe the academic and research institutions, consumer organizations again, and then the food business uh, and industry associations, farmers and farmers associations, media. In fact, even I would say media. Media has to take this up in a very big way to promote or to reduce the food wastage. And then, of course, I would say the development partners and the last but not the least is the citizens who have a major stake in the entire thing. And as per the whole, I would say the food loss and the wastage in, in the supply chain, if you look at, probably the develop, developed countries, the wastage is, percentage is very high, something like 56% according to the estimates of FAO. And uh, in India, of course, it is, it's around 44% or developing countries it's about 44%. That means a lot of food is wasted, whether it is uh, you know, wantonly or unwantonly, I think you know, these things are happening, but we need to control or arrest some of these things. And I would uh, just come to, uh, the, what are the steps in a zero wastage system, which can be established? Maybe reduce the amount of waste that is produced. That is one aspect which we have been talking. Reuse the materials repeatedly. Whatever is wasted, you re try to reuse it and recycle the materials to make new products even. That would be another very important thing. And of course, recovering energy from the waste. I think you know, these are a few things which I feel are very, very important in the present day context. 
and of course uh, coming to the technologies part of it maybe i think we are driven by many new forms of food trends today in uh, india of course uh, you know maybe because the covid influenced things are also there but all the same we have what you call the personalized nutrition or organic foods all natural foods traditional foods vegan foods and things like that maybe e platform foods this has become a new concept and the foods are not different as what we have processing or selling and home cooked food plant based meat ayurveda products packed versus loose foods functional foods nutraceuticals immunity foods convenience foods and cut vegetables i think you know, these are uh, the different names are given for the different kind of product where uh, processing uh, is done to some extent may not be with uh, a little bit of value addition as well so that is where i think you know we need to really look at of course nowadays the new concept is the cloud kitchen and uh, safe and uh, new packaging systems all these things i would say are influencing the i would say the food wastage or food reduction in the food wastage and losses and things like that and probably one thing we need to really look at is despite all these things we are at a very poor level in terms of processing of food maybe us if you see it is about 80% of the food is processed france is 70% again malaysia i would compare ourselves with malaysia which is an asian country probably 80% of the food is processed in malaysia and uh, thailand is 30% at least we should re be reaching i would say thailand which of course you see a lot of these processed foods uh, in uh, even on the, the small petty shops and things like that which otherwise doesn't happen in india india we are still at i would say about 10% so that means looking at all this probably the technological solutions which we always feel are very important is like you know of course there are many of the technologies which we have been talking today and uh, uh, coming to the 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 what you call uh, the real required i would say possible emerging solutions that is something which is very very important maybe the cold chain infrastructure for horticultural supply i think this is something which i would say is very very important and of course the blockchain in food supply and our chains this has become really you know very very important for all of us otherwise we will be losing a lot of food in the transit in the logistics and also in the storage then of course the robotics and drone technology and uh, maybe the other innovative ict tools these things are becoming very very important today maybe rfid is one which is being used in the logistics so then of course uh, radio frequency you know detection system that is something which is very very uh, found to be very important among uh, ais artificial intelligence again and then advanced analytics internet of things iot now internet of everything that's where i think you know the uh, intelligent things and all that robotic process automation this also is gaining importance today so probably i think the immersive technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality and things like that there are some things which are very very important this apart i would say we have all the technologies which are found to be very very important for us for food processing like the latest technologies are like the cold plasma technology or pulsed electrified field and omic heating and uh, biofortification and even i would say fortification also irradiation and hydrolysis of bio waste protein rich foods and isolation and purification of bioactive peptides especially and uh, which are being used in nutraceutical and pharmaceuticals and high pressure processing maybe high pressure homogenization ultrasound three dimensional printing now 3d printing has become very very important nowadays that is gaining a lot of importance everywhere to meet the requirements of uh, the food industry maybe traditional food in packed form this is what we have to be very very cautious because i know yesterday i had some discussion with some people where traditional foods are of high quality but their shelf life is very small how do we extend this and how do we standardize these things i think that is something which is very very important of course look for always health and wellness of the people so these are some of the things which i would say are very important from the perspective of one is of course the processing value addition quality management storage and of course then now the waste utilization is something which is very very important 
uh, probably fortification is another thing nowadays we are seeing a lot of oil being fortified and of course the atas are being fortified and uh, probably even the nanobiotechnology involvement to have good packaging material or maybe having some sort of a bio degradable packaging material this is something i would say which is very very important and all these things have to be looked in holistically and i would also like to make a mention here niftem we have started an incubation facility that is the niftem you know innovation and incubation facility which is uh, which is uh, already we have called for applications 120 people have you know, applied out of which we have shortlisted only 10 we are going to address some of these issues give them all the opportunity to understand to mentor them and also give them sort of a hands on experience and maybe go for a, a micro level approach and then upscaling it probably i think you know, these are some things which are essentially required keeping in view three issues the centers of uh, centers of excellence is like base to wealth is something which we always want to take care and uh, probably i think you know maybe the fortification bio fortification bio fortification we are not addressing only the fortification part of it and of course the nano biotechnology in food science and technology and the packaging part of it so with this i thank you very much to the organizers and also kalsa for uh, uh, giving me uh, you know time to uh, give out my some of my i would say observations or opinions on how to reduce the food wastage in the years to come and what should be our approaches. Thank you very much. All the best. Mr. Call, are you there? Mr. Call? Well, thank you, Dr. Vasudevapa, for your uh, uh, interesting, uh, you know, take on, uh, you know, managing the food wastage and all. So I think uh, Mr. Call has uh, disconnected. I can't see him. Okay, okay, no. okay, you are there. Okay. Back okay. With you. okay, okay. Dr. Daksa, thank you very much. Excellent, thank you, uh, you know, that uh, presentation, excellent overview of the entire industry, but our focus has been on supply chain. In addition to that, you have further educated us on the technological technologies available and all that. But, yeah. As I told you, in the, as I told in the morning, that we have got to go to the grassroots level. Yeah. Number one, our we should not forget our land holding of our farmers is very small. Yeah, right. So how to collect like milk? How to collect from farmers and put it in the nearest collection centers? One collection center should cater to at least about fifty to hundred farmers. So the that easiness. To prevent yeah. the waste from farmer to collection centers. So these collection centers are absolutely important. And then Very primary good. processing centers. One process a primary processing center to cater to say about 50 or 40 or of these collection centers. So that there is no time gap. Time gap given from yeah. the harvesting to processing so that there is no wastage. This is very, very important. And then from these primary processing centers to main center processing units and the other areas wholesale markets and retail markets we have right. two many possibilities until this chain gets strengthened it gets established it gets very well thought of it gets very well you know implemented yeah. this farm to fork wastage will always be there that is yes. number one as i told you i have we are getting a detailed study on technology foresight done on northeast at the moment. Later on, yes. through TIFA, the Department of Science and Technology will be covering the whole country. At the moment, our focus is on Northeast. Fruit and vegetable, report on fruits and vegetables has already been launched. It has already been out on the uh, on 10th of February, but that was the TIFA Foundation Day. And it was, it is already there. I will have it sent to you if you haven't got yeah. it. Yeah, our, next is, our next is on ethnic foods, which you touched later, later part of yeah, the yeah, the traditional ethnic foods, yeah, in all over the eight states of northeast. Fantastic, fantastic types of ethnic foods being produced, but it is a household sector. Yeah, right. how, to, how to popularize it? How to popularize it? How to carry yeah. these recipes to the mainstream? Yeah. And, in order to in order to give economic 
economic development to the whole, all these kind of households. This report is coming out in another 10, 15 days. I have, okay. I have indicated there how these household recipes, which are absolutely, you know, they are health foods, they are based on natural products, natural power, power produce. They are very we have tasty, excellent aroma, but confined to household sector. Yeah. So I have come out with the technological solutions with some research resource people over there, and we have found the way how to pack it, preserve it, and popularize it all over. So that was your last point about yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then the it was required. Yes, another, yes, yes, yes. another point, Dr. Vasudeva, uh, what you touched was. The zero wastage. Yeah. The zero wastage. Huh? Uh, I am telling you uh, that uh, ODOP uh, scheme. Yes. Yes. Minister Food Processing. So I have developed those notes for Minister Food Processing, and I delivered the first lecture in Chitur. Okay. Where it was based on tomato. And right. store the tomato that you are processing and skin you are throwing out, which is burned in the boiler. And this skin yep. is full of nutrition, polyolefin, yes. reserve it all. So I put, make food bars out of it and cook, give it to these malnutrition children suffering from malnutrition or these uh, women, poor women. And you will do a lot of Similarly, in Krishnagiri, I delivered a lecture on mango. The mango stones. A lot of nutrition, mango yeah. flour, oil, and everything. So, wastage, converting waste into wealth, what you touched in the later part of your you know presentation, is also of absolute importance, you know. Yeah. Then it is it is also amazing, it is also astonishing that in poor countries like Nigeria, why yes. should per capita, capita wastage of food be yeah, one hundred ninety-nine yeah. kilograms. Yeah, one hundred ninety-nine kilograms. Huh? This is yeah. kilograms. Yes, yes. I can, I can tell you in, um, I can tell you in America. I have noticed if you order a glass of water, they bring so such a big glass and it is full of ice. You have yeah. to take <laughs> one sip. And you know, for making that ice, how much energy has gone in? Yeah. And if you order a sizzler for yourself, yeah. it comes in a big portion which can feed 10 of us. Yeah. And right. then the it goes waste. Yes. So education is required. A lot of education is required in that field. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. your, um, your presentation was excellent as usual. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And we mean to we mean to have join hands together. Let us develop together. And yes, sir. And technology package. Yeah. From farm to folk, what needs to be done? Low yeah, technology. Right. Another thing you touched the solutions, modern technologies like efficient resources. Yeah. Regenerative agri practices. Yeah, right. Low cost handling storage, as you said. Yeah. Connectivity, wireless sensors through wireless sensors, monitors, yeah. ICTs, and, yeah, right. and infrastructure, right? That is also yeah. very important. As you are aware that in Europe and America, I mean, all confectionery and bakery, they have shifted to 3D printing. Yeah, right. So you have yeah, right. the, so, no. Especially yeah. the so chain slowly, foods. Slowly, yeah. slowly with centers of excellence and people yeah. like you, uh, uh, yeah. leading these institutions, we are marching ahead and we will make a difference. In, in, yes, in, thank you, sir. Thank, you, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank now, you, sir. Thank may, you. may I invite Mr. Rawale to make his presentation, please? Thank you, sir. It was uh, wonderful to listen to you, Dr. Kaul and uh, Dr. Vasudeva, but it's really a treat uh, to listen and learn from uh, the uh, masters like you. I'm, I'm actually, I have a presentation, but I'm unable to share. I think the sharing link is, uh, it is, it is not uh, enabled here. And even the video is not working. I'm sorry for that, but my, is my audio, audio I mean, am, am I audible to anyone? Yes, yes you're very much audible and the access to give presentation has been given to you. Oh, uh, 
Yes, now it is there. Let, let me just check that. Yes, Mr. Ole. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm trying to share my presentation. Uh, yeah, some of it. Just give me a moment, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it was wonderful to listen to you, sir. You have covered everything, you know, with most of the things. Uh, one uh, point maybe I would like to touch upon is, you know, whatever you spoke, you know, the, just the practical application of that, you know, in case of uh, banana value chain. Is, is the uh, presentation visible now? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's very, very good. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Dr. Kaul, Dr. Vasudevapa, you have covered everything, really. And uh, uh, the one thing what Dr. Kaul said is we need to to reach to the grassroots level. Uh, I won't be going in, uh, in details of the figures and uh, the, the technological part, what you covered, but maybe just, you know, the, the, pro, the, the product and the processes, uh, what we develop to, to, to reduce, and uh, perhaps to prevent the food loss and the wasted in case of banana value chain. Uh, as Dr. Cole, I think, the person of about 40,000 metric tons of banana, uh, the largest one. And uh, Jalgao is the, the, one of the biggest uh, oh, banana, yeah. banana region in, in the country. And perhaps if it had been a republic uh, uh, state, you know, it would have been a seventh largest banana producing country in the world. So. Uh, Mr. Call, may I request you to put yourself on mute? Yeah, okay, okay. Please go ahead, sir. Mr. Rawale, please go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So, uh, so, so banana, uh, banana is is one of the uh, you know uh, uh, most important crop nutritionally as well as uh, from the farmers' point of view and from all the stakeholders' point of view. Uh, what I'm going to do is here, here is you know I'm going to just you know uh, speak about the, the processes what we developed uh, to to prevent the losses. Maybe the, the maybe future losses in the cultivation area then. Then in, in cultivation uh, part of the uh, banana, then in harvest and post harvest, and then food processing. Uh, uh, you know, as Dr. Cole uh, said, uh, we are a subsidiary of uh, Jain Irrigation Systems Limited. I did not uh, speak on it. Uh, Jain uh, Farm Fresh. Uh, you know, we actually process all tropical fruits and uh, uh, the onion and vegetable with the head rate. One of the large, we are one of the largest mango processors in the world and second largest in. In, in onion, we have plants in Jalgao and uh, Badoda as well as in Chitur also. Uh, the, what I would do is here is, you know, I would just speak about the banana uh, value chain uh, right from the, the tissue culture, uh, planting material, manufacturing, and then uh, secondary hiding and all. So what we did is, you know, we have developed our, our value chain for processing. This is applicable for all tropical foods, vegetables, onions, as well as spices, what we do here. We, we supply uh, the, uh, you know, inputs, agriculture inputs, specifically the micro irrigation systems, uh, the precision of, uh, you know, softwares to schedule irrigation and fertigation so that the right amount of doses at right time and right place is given uh, to the plant. Then uh, we also support uh, growers with PVC pipings and all, then sprinklers and then tissue culture also. And we, we do a lot of contract farming. We have a successful model in case of white onion. We buy back almost around uh, uh, 50,000 50, metric tons of uh, white onion process. And then we have a training facility, capacity building and all. And we process of the tropical fruits vegetable as well as we, uh, we do fresh. Uh, we are not in domestic market, but we, we do export. We we started with uh, uh, mango in 2007, 2007 when Japan and the US market opened, and now we are into fresh banana, and then we supply it to our existing customers. 
See, the banana supply chain, actually the value chain, it starts with, uh, you know, uh, having the uh, banana nursery, the mother nursery first, monitoring it, and then uh, collecting the rhizomes for multiplying and uh, developing into a sapling. So it's a uh, tissue culture, it can give you a genetically pure, this is free and uh, authentic uh, saplings, and which would help into having an, a bumper yield, uh, maybe a uniform size uh, uh, bunch without uh, much of physical uh, disorders, without uh, deshaping, maybe, and if we have a better protection applications without any pest and disease attack. So we have this facility and we provide almost eight crore of uh, planting material to the uh, farmers, we do, uh, we do provide them agronomical guidance also. The soil issues and soil management is a very important role in preventing loss, future loss rather, uh, in terms of quality, you know. Uh, maybe, you know, if the soil is com compact, you all know it, and, uh, you know, maybe we can have, we will have, a, um, uh, you know, the uh, smaller size of bananas, uh, may not be matching the specifications of international standards, and it may fetch uh, maybe a little, uh, less uh, money for the farmer. So this, this important the soil issues are we, we, we actually advocate farmers, we recommend them to you know reclaim soils to avoid the soil issues. Uh, micro irrigation is one uh, very important uh, uh, aspect, very important element of the value chain which can contribute to the quality of the, the produce and which would avoid the, the future uh, future loss in yield rather I would say. And then the precision uh, in case of irrigation as well as uh, fertigation scheduling. Uh, this is uh, actually a plant and food care. This is again one more important uh, aspect. You know, the at field level, it is said that almost four to five percent of the banana goes waste. It could be because of uh, you know poor handling and also because of insect and pest infestation. The fruit care, the bagging of the bunch, it would it would you know avoid the insect damage to the bunch and the quality would be excellent, the, the, the wastage rather, and the value loss because of the, of the, the insect and pest infestation would be completely avoided by the bagging as well as the, the plant and fruit care operations. So we developed this technique and we have uh, provided this knowledge to the farmer also. Most of the farmers in Jarga area, they are doing this and the quality is excellent. This is one more, you know, physiological disorder because of chilling. Chilling, you know, in India, we, we do get uh, the ripe bananas, yellow bananas. Uh, if you, you know, see it in January and December, January, you will have a dull light color of uh, the banana. That actually features, uh, you know, a little less price as compared to the bright and attractive color. So we are trying to avoid this chilling injury also and the losses in terms of value to the farmers, to the retailers is uh, we are trying to no, minimize that. We we standardize the, the package of practices so that we get the uh, the specified quality produce and it will reduce the wastage in the farm, the losses in the farm, and would give an excellent yield to the farmer. This is uh, the quality check and all we uh, normally perform. This is the quality of banana uh, we get uh, here in Jalga. This this was uh, this was what I was uh, speaking about the actual data. Uh, from one study, you know, we, at the farmer's field, the banana, it is specifically to the banana, in the field it is about 4.5 to 5 percent uh, loss, and then in transit it is because of the poor handling and maybe poor packaging and uh, the transportation and also the road conditions, they, it contributes, uh, it's about uh, 2 to 3 percent, but I'm sure it is more than 2 to 3 percent. I have actually seen the the, the bunches being transported from uh, Jalgao. You see some of the photographs and uh, actually observed and uh, checked in Azadpur Mandi in Delhi. The, the losses or maybe the future loss at the home level because of these practices or because of the injury that uh, that actually uh, that cause that happens in the transit uh, would contribute in the losses or wastage at the home level. Uh, then the losses in the ripening is uh, it is also seven to eight percent, seven point five to eight percent. There is a story, you know, in 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 case of ripening, we have changed the system uh, maybe a decade and a half uh, ago in in Jalgao area specifically. As I said, you know, Jalgao is uh, one of the largest uh, banana growing belt, and but still in two thousand six seven, 
we used to get, you know, the ripe banana, but the, those were not ripe, uh, I mean, yellow ripe, those were ripe, but green bananas, you know, soft green bananas, because the ripening process, the weather used to add up was different. It was, you know, uh, heap, uh, they used to keep uh, the, the banana punches and then heat it. Uh, so we changed the way they were ripening. We we uh, brought those uh, you know vendors to our facility. We 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 trained them. We showed them our modern ripening facility, and we asked them to use ethylene uh, ethylene gas to ripe the banana. And uh, you won't believe in in a, a we, we sort of result that the change with the change in the ripening uh, methods and in a year or two. Uh, they shifted to small ripening chambers. Uh, they are using ethylene. Now we get uh, uh, very, you know, very delicious, very attractive ripe yellow banana in Jalgaon. So those ripening losses, perhaps maybe there could be some loss, maybe one or two percent, in, in, because of the moisture, because banana is ripened at uh, almost 18 degrees Celsius, and uh, that is completely avoided, and we get you know fully ripe uh, yellow banana in in Jalga area. Elsewhere in the country also, we have actually. Uh, you know, uh, uh, provided this knowledge to all the retailers or the vendors to our extension system uh, in other parts of the country, uh, wherever we sell our saplings to the growers. Now, the losses at retail are, uh, are also huge, you know, it's almost 9 to 10 percent, and the cumulative is about 23 to 26 percent. This is in case of banana only, and, uh, uh, and uh, as you said, you know, it, uh, in other commodities, it is uh, even more than this. So uh, we try to avoid this, you know, like Dr. Rasudiyopa said that return on levels, you know, maybe a zero energy pool chamber could save this loss, could minimize this loss uh, without adding cost to the, much cost to the retailer. Now, this is, uh, this is what the, the traditional uh, system of, you know, uh, uh, harvesting the punch, uh, the person actually, the, we, we call it a cutter, you know, the who cuts, the who harvests the punch. You know, he keeps the bunch on, on the ground and it is taken as a payload outside the uh, field where the, the vehicle is uh, actually being loaded. We changed the system a little bit. We, we actually provided uh, what you call, you know, a, a, a bamboo and you can just, you know, suspend the banana, uh, a banana bunch to that bamboo and you can avoid the bruising. You can avoid the, uh, the damages that would lead to the wasted after ripening then we can have a you know a, a, a padded uh, you know uh, 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 what do you call is uh, padded sheet or uh, uh, padded with cushion and then you can carry the uh, the bunch on the uh, shoulder so this this would act, uh, avoid bruising this would avoid the uh, further the wastages in in banana uh, chain this is an, one, one more photograph, you know, which actually uh, shows how the bunches are transported. Now, these are very small things, you know, the people, they casually do it. They don't understand what happens, you know, after ripening. Even a small bruising that would lead to the, the, the damage over there. And if, after ripening, once the ripening cycle is over, it is, it is just a waste, you know. So, uh, you know, this is how the bunches are uh, uh, transported. The last further four, the last two photographs, you know, these are actually a common practice, you know. It's an open uh, uh, vehicle, and the, the, the person who is loading the vehicle, actually, he, he is walking on the uh, punches, he's standing on it. Uh, this is how uh, elsewhere in the uh, uh, globe, where the banana are grown, uh, specifically for export, the system is completely developed. Uh, uh, for example, there are many companies like uh, Chiquita del Del Monte, which are actually the biggest companies in the fresh banana, and uh, they have developed their system like this. You know, it's a cable ropeway wherein bunch can can easily be be a bunch is suspended to the the cable ropeway, and it is being pulled by a tractor. It is being pulled by a person. One person can also pull this uh, banana. There are uh, banana bunches, and uh, you can see there is no no damage, no bruising to the banana. It can be easily taken to the back houses. Uh, which are actually located in uh, the, the the field itself. That is where that is the uh, you know uh, uh, Dr. Paul, Dr. Vasudev, uh, you know both of you have uh, spoken over it. The infrastructure development in case in our country that is lacking. So we don't have backhouses in the field. 
the, we have a pack house uh, in Jalga. Uh, we, uh, we also uh, would like to develop and design the pack houses, establish pack houses in the Mr. Rawale, your voice is breaking. You are, but then voice is breaking in between. If you could just increase the volume of your mic, then maybe we can hear you clearly. Avdesh, is he audible to all of you? Well, there is some problem with the, with the audio, huh? I yeah. Don't know it is that I think your mic is not huh? properly set. Mr. Wale? Okay, let, let me just check. Is it audible now? Hello? Yes, you are. Okay. So this this is one more practice of, uh, you know uh, this is actually followed in uh, Philippines. Uh, the uh, instead of harvesting or cutting the bunch in the field, you know you can just dehand the uh, hands from the bunch, and the the dehanded hands is taken out of the the field. The bottom uh, photo you can see for export, you know, we developed this uh, system and uh, we, we are actually, uh, you know, using the crates, the motion crates, padded crate to uh, to transport the uh, handed hand outside the field. This is how we do it. You know, we, we are actually handing the hands uh, from the tree itself. We are keeping it there, cushioning it and then putting it in the cushion uh, crates. This is a small innovation, a small change in the process, you know. Instead of handling the whole bunch, instead of handling the, the uh, uh, uncushioned or just the handed hands in the open vehicle, we are transporting it into the, uh, with, we are actually packing it into the crate. And then we use a small push cart, you know, instead of taking a head load outside the field, and uh, we, we are using this push part so that the bruising and other damages are avoided. This is uh, what uh, the eminent speaker, our guest speakers have uh, emphasis on to establish a cold chain right from the field. So we, we use the reaper vans to, you know, to bring those uh, the handed hands to our backhouse facility in the Jalga. We also track the uh, vehicle movement to GPRS. We also track the speed so that in transit losses, in transit damages could be controlled. And we have been fairly successful in in, in getting the previously banana at, at, at our back house in Jalgao. You wouldn't believe, but we have established a, a, a supply chain which could bring the dehanded hands in these cushion crates from as far as 100 kilometers uh, from Jalgao without bruising. And the same we are actually processing in our pack house. We'll see that uh, in, in subsequent slides and exporting those. This is the, uh, the view of our pack house where the vehicles which are actually loaded in the fields and uh, received at our pack house in Jalgao. These vehicles might have traveled somewhere about 50 to 100 kilometers, uh, you know, from field to the pack house. This is how the bananas, uh, the hangs were packed. 
They were cushioned and placed in the cushion crate. This is the, the hand which was demanded in the field about 50 to 100 kilometers away from Jalgaon. You can see the, uh, the quality. This is actually, uh, you know, there is no bruising on the hand. You can see the back portion of the same hand. This is the, the, the infrastructure we have developed for exporting fresh bananas from our Jalgaon facility. Uh, this is a state of art pack house. You know, it has got some, you know, all the treatments like right from washing, then cleaning, then sorting, leveling, and all, and the packing also. This is one more. You know, a photograph showing the washing and selection of hands. The the hands are actually sorted out. These hands, which are actually matching and the specified quality, it is it goes in the the second uh, uh, tank. There are two tanks. One is actually then it is also using as a pre cooling uh, um, uh, technique uh, uh, for the hands which has been harvested in the fields and brought to a pack house. This is uh, the hands are actually the, there could be a some sap on the hand, which would actually lead to fungal infestation if it is not clean from the hand, and that fungal infestation would lead to the rotting at, in the in, in the home, and that would lead to the wastage. So cleaning detergent cleaning uh, was is being performed over here so that the sap is removed. Then uh, the excellent uh, crown cut, so it will be packed in the polyliner inside the bag. So if you give a clean cut, you know, uh, it would damage the polyliner. So, you know, the, what you call is because of vacuumizing, you would create a, a passive map inside the bag and that will remain as a passive uh, environment uh, for the, the hands that is packed in the boxes. If the crown is not properly cut, it might, you know, puncture the bag and that you know, modified atmosphere, although passive because of vacuumizing won't be there, and that will again trigger the ripening in transit, and that would lead to the wastage at the destination. This this is uh, the operation, the how cushioning is done, and the, the labels are being, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, label and the hand separators between the two layers of the hand. The finger layers it is being placed so that the two layers they are not actually you know rubbing over one or other. These are the uh, the fruits which are being packed uh, in different. Uh, Three minutes. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, I'll just uh, run through. This is uh, the the uh, vacuumization. The subject you see is is the ethylene scrubber. This is also important, you know, when we uh, export the fresh bananas, actually, it takes almost three weeks to four weeks to reach to destination, even to the Middle East, even if we say that it reaches in seven days, but actually for inspections and for the, for the bananas to reach on the shelf, it takes almost four weeks. So this uh, ethylene scrubber are very important to, to increase the shelf life. This is how it is being packed. Uh, it's a passive map by by removing vacuum by removing air from the uh, box and the ball liner. The different packs. This is how the box is uh, designed. This box is actually you know compatible in strength with all the the international players like Chekita, Dell, and Del Monte. That's got excellent compressive strength, excellent um, you know for the uh, tearing strains also, so that you know the the quality uh, of the uh, the hands packed at the pack house would remain same at the destination. This is how the bananas were boxes were loaded. You can see the data logger. You can how we can track this. Uh, uh, you know the environmental parameters uh, in the loaded containers in transit, and you can intimate the the transporter also. This is what the quality at the destinations of our banana. You can see there is no bruising here. It was this is this photograph was taken in the Dubai market after it has traveled uh, for four weeks. This is this was comparison done by us with the different brands. You can see Jane Palm Fresh Banana just with with the technological innovations in processes we could send it uh, without bruising and it was, it was compatible. This was on 
of the ripening. This is the wrapping the bananas uh, with the, uh, the uh, polyfilm. This is one more uh, technology we, which we can use at the shelf at the destination. Uh, this was actually the rejection from our pack house, which we we wiped in our control uh, control environment uh, ripening chambers, and it was sent to the processing. This is what the processing is being done. They received raw bananas in crates, then it was ripened in the uh, the the ripening chambers. It is uh, provided issued to the plant. It is being uh, you know uh, mashed, homogenized, sterilization. Preheating was done before sterilizations to, to prevent uh, the, uh, you know, uh, and uh, then after that, it was uh, aseptically packed in the, uh, the drums. So this is the, this was the processing technologies we used. This is this is one more slide when the, the waste which is generated in our food processing plant, like field, which is this being used in our biogas plant. We generate electricity uh, from this the the digested slide. It is provided to the grid, and the rest, which is uh, remain in the digest that, that is being used as a as a biofertilizer. So that's all I have, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Rawle. Interesting study. Instead of instead of having been instead of ha having presented a generalized view of all the products it was a very very interesting case study they focused on banana thank you sir uh, uh, there's nothing but but one thing is there that if you go to uh, you know you are you have shown the way to every banana grower major banana grower in the country how to export but if we are supposed to be the largest banana producing country in the world why is our contribution to banana trade in the world so small? If you go to US, most of the varieties you see are from South America. Why are we not able to promote in a big way? Of course, Apeda is doing a good job. But why are we not able to promote in a big way? Then in your presentation, you said that small banana does not have the international market. What, why, are we, why are you not trying to promote this market? Market this pro market promotion is missing, so that we we make them understand that chhatri banana is the best banana you can have taste wise. Small, small banana is one of the finest varieties. Why are you a little uh, hesitant to promote spend money on promotion worldwide? Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, see, see, we, we try. Uh, hello. Three years ago, you know, even this small banana is sold in the international market. Korea is the biggest market for small banana. We are actually promoting Indian small small Indian bananas to the Korean market also. Why? See, we are one of the largest producers of banana, but why we are not actually one of the largest? <laughs> Largest it's, it's because you know, the, 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 our distribution practices, you know, our value chain is not developed for export market. What we developed is the quantitative production systems, but we have not switched over to the qualitative production systems. We are trying to develop the qualitative production systems, and now we, we are we are developing the processes first. But I am sure, you know, I I would quote here because you know four years ago, India used to export only fifty thousand metric tons of banana. But since last three two years, it has actually grown by four times. So we are now now actually in a process to become one of the largest exporters uh, of the bananas in the global market. And I am sure that we will we'll be will be having that position sooner. Very well, very well. I have another question. Yes, sir. You see. 72% according to your presentation about 72% of the wastage comes from ripening and retailing no retailing, you don't have any control on retailers yeah. but ripening are you looking for some other possibilities like low instead of replacing ethylene by electric impulses or whatever a lot of research is being going on since you are the pioneer producer you have done a fantastic job are you looking at some R&D uh, innovations or uh, alternate process of ripening? 
Definitely, sir. See, the right losses are about are, are specifically the water loss, the moisture loss, and some maybe because of the handling losses. It is seven to eight uh, percent, and we, we are at the moment we are using ethylene, but we are open for uh, the innovations, uh, you know, which we can use at our ripening chambers. We are open for that, sir. Hello. Thank you very much. We will have some more questions from the participants in the webinar at the end of this webinar at the moment. So let me invite Mr. Ravindra Dolare from Ecozen to make his presentation. Is he there? Ravindra, are you hearing me? Vibhaji? Yes. Yes, sir. Good morning. I'm here. Yeah, please. Mr. Dolare, please. Great. Huh? Yes, sir. This is Ravindra Dolare. Yes. Please go ahead. Sure, sir. I'm just getting uh, my screen. Oh, I think I can still see the screen here. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, can you see the screen here? Yes, it is visible. Yeah, it's OK now. OK, fine. Just there is some external voice. Just uh, Mr. Paul, could you please put yourself on mute? Thank you. Yes. So first of all, thank you so much for uh, giving us an opportunity and to present uh, here in this forum. So I think since morning, there are a lot of good uh, discussions are happening. Uh, with challenges, solutions, and uh, more towards uh, value chain and food loss. So we uh, at Ecosen Solutions, we incorporated this company in 2010 and very rightly said by Kausar today in the morning that it was uh, started by IIT Kharagpur alumni in 2010. Uh, when we started these organizations, we realized a uh, lot of current challenges uh, uh, in the agri value chain and we identified some problems and then we decided uh, with the help of our technical knowledge and expertise how can we solve uh, this problem in India even though we have contributed a bit uh, in last 10 years however we are still uh, along in this journey and we are still far away to make a still better impact because there are a lot of hurdles at this point of time and uh, we are progressing very slowly and steadily into this entire value chain. Uh, having said that, our main uh, vision of the organization is to enable farm to fork uh, value chain for perishable commodities. So we are playing a role in uh, perishable commodities in India, fruits and vegetables. And we have developed some uh, competencies in last 10 years uh, to understand this market and provide uh, these solutions to the even small, medium and large farmers in India. Having said that, uh, when we observe that uh, during the graduation stage, that uh, the, there, there are a lot of farmers, they were not able to irrigate their land uh, due to lack of efficiency and affordable pumping solutions. So that was the time uh, it clicked that uh, if this is a problem uh, in India, uh, where the country is still progressing, and only 34.3% of arable land is irrigated. So this is a big problem. And then we decided, uh, let's work out on uh, this problem and uh, let's find out some solution which is like innovative in nature and at the same time uh, good for a farming community. So we came up, uh, we understood that this irrigation pumping industry uh, in last, uh, I will say seven to eight years. And there is a lot of support happening from MNRE, there are a lot of good schemes nowadays available from Kusum. So we realized that there is a high potential uh, in this segment, not only in a domestic market, but even in the export market. And we see that the, with CAGR of 80% from 2018 to 22, which is like uh, for the solar irrigation sector, which is like a fantastic opportunity to get into this market. So having said that, uh, uh, what we did after our enough study with the farming community understanding their problem statement we uh, developed our uh, first controllers uh, 
during 11 12 time uh, with the help of iot and analytics uh, as a support to it so this is the first controller that we developed and, and launched install at uh, one of the farmers land and that help a farmer a lot uh, in terms of increasing uh, its production so uh, we we played a better role in terms of uh, even though there were a lot of players available at that point of time in the market but uh, we thought a bit differently how can our iot and analytics capability can improve the supply chain efficiency especially on the pre harvest side so we work on uh, the flow output level water level estimations and fluctuations the motor windings and then we decided let's have optimal irrigation so today in fact uh, i will proudly say that we have reached to a level where we have seen that the motor jam uh, is something which is a very common problem uh, in this sector and uh, once motor gets jammed it takes a lot of time to get resolution because service engineer has to reach to the site take out the entire motor and pumping solution from the ground and then solve the problem and again put it which is like three to four days of process but we develop a solution remotely where this jamming detection can happen remotely and even resolution can happen remotely so just by changing the rotation directions we do uh, this jamming solution even remotely in a fraction of seconds so this is how we are uh, progressing towards developing iot and analytics as another capability along with very efficient solar water pumping solution for the farming community so uh, today we are one of the market leader uh, into this market and uh, impacted at least 44000 farmers in india in last 10 years with the water pumping as a solution and we are looking forward to install many more units uh, from the this side but what we realize that uh, one is so he is one of the co-founder here pratik singhal and uh, uh, the farmer in the picture is the first farmer where we installed our unit you can see that the barren land there and then after implementation of solar water pump uh, this is in a period of 1.5 to 2 years of time you can see completely a green land so this this is how it has impacted the overall production side but when the farmer was very happy with this because one of his pre harvesting problem got resolved because of uh, this type of solution and it made it possible to increase his production but when we visited the same farmer again we realized that there are few more problems okay uh, so even though we built our entire solar water pumping solution with uh, different capabilities uh, like controller is our one of the capability today sms operation is one of the capability over the air update is one of the capability and we realized that uh, most of these features are at par with the industry standard uh, and then we developed uh, the motors which are like highly efficient in nature so that overall uh, output uh, can be also made efficiently and this these motors are also last longing in terms of uh, the life and in terms of warranty as well uh, we we develop capability in terms of mobile app where farming community uh, can use this app to raise service tickets uh, this is first of a kind app where one app solution can offer uh, a survey as well and we can push a lot of updates uh, through this app so we develop overall uh, technical piece mechanical piece we integrated a lot of these activities and we uh, implemented solutions uh, on the pre harvest side but what this farmer told us after we visited uh, again one of the major challenge that everybody is talking here since morning that even though on the pre harvest side lot of technologies and developments has happened in india and it is still happening but on the post harvest side they are facing a lot of challenges so one the farmer told us that sir our production has increased but my income has not increased in the same proportion and that gave us another problem statement in a year of 2013 and 14 that even though we have resolved one problem of the farmer which is on pre harvest side he is happy with his production but at the same time his income has not increased in the same proportion and many a times he told that they don't understand demand and supply cycle infrastructure is not available and many a times they throw their commodities so picture here uh, 
in on the screen uh, is a common situation currently even in india in many apmcs many markets when farmers don't get right price to their commodity they generally don't sell it but they throw their commodities like this and this is and that leads to the food loss which what we are talking about here so we realize that 7.3 billion usd produced wasted every year so even though there are a lot of solutions available on the agri input side like solar pump and few other aspects but we realize that the farmers income has not increased the food loss still is a major challenge and that gave the organization another vision that how can as an organization we contribute towards reducing food loss then we started talking to many farmers across india we in fact uh, went to different states different districts and we understood what are the present challenges of the farmer so we realized first challenge that uh, even today that challenge exists and it was there in 2014 as well the, the, the infrastructure was not available at the farm so the infrastructure like cold storages is still available which is far away from the farm at city level but actual requirement of this infrastructure is required at the farm and i think today in the morning session there was a mention that the pre cooling facilities has to be available at the farm and we realized that this pre cooling facilities for the highly perishable commodities were not available at the farm so we got our solution uh, after speaking to many farmers and then we decided to develop a solution which is like available at the farm so we develop uh, i will say we claim ourselves that we develop world's first decentralized solar cold storages so th this idea came after speaking to a lot of farmers now why we decided to get into solar so everybody knows that even today there is a lot of challenges of electricity availability at the farm and we realized that if we want to develop something at the farm the first challenge is energy availability so we thought let's develop solar solutions now we always believe and we always want to develop energy efficient solutions so whenever it comes to a solar or any other renewable energy there is a conception that to store energy the chemical batteries are used uh, like lead acid battery or lithium ion battery but we decided something different we decided let's not get into that direction develop something which is energy efficient and which is easy and convenient to the farmer so the team went ahead we thought a lot and we developed the first concept which is thermal storage as a concept to store energy and let's not use chemical batteries to store energy and hence we developed our solution which is solar cold storages with the help of solar energy with the help of thermal technology and uh, this is a result which is fao 2011 food balance data shows that 60% of the waste happens between the field and the end consumer and i think since morning a lot of us are talking about uh, this type of waste and if we if we look at the yellow the blue highlighted uh, graphs here most of the wastage happens between post harvest period then there is a processing and packaging and there is a distribution and marketing so uh, the farmer education is very important here the solution like infrastructure is very important here and then we decided like how this type of solution will impact farmers life farmers economy and why why this type of solution is still required even let's say infrastructure is not available but will farmer really use it so we did our own internal study so at ecosin solutions uh, we believe in our another capability that uh, we study a lot on commodities so we have done study of almost 123 commodities available in india and outside and uh, some of the papers are available on our uh, web portal if anybody wants to use it they can use this case studies so i will give you simple example here okay let's say we did a study of uh, effect of pre cooling at the farm on different commodities let me take example of grapes here so green graph uh, uh, here indicates that uh, the effect without pre cooling and uh, the blue or the graph indicates the effect because of pre cooling so what we realize is that without pre cooling let's say a grape gets a life of 3 to 5 days just by pre cooling grapes we, i am not talking about staging at this point of time just by pre cooling the grape life can be extended by another one or two days 
so we got an idea here that just by pre-cooling if commodity can commodity life can be extended by let's say three to four days four to seven days then farmer will get an opportunity one to have a better shelf life to maintain a good quality second the farmer can get access to the farther markets which is not possible today because of lack of infrastructure so solving a big time problem for the farming community so we started working on two problems one problem is to have pre-cooling facilities at the farm and hence the concept of decentralized solar cold storages came out and with this 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 particular picture indicates that if there is no pre-cooling at the farm the, the highly perishable commodities can reach to only nearby markets and many times farmer don't get price however if he does a pre-cooling and if he transport that pre-cooled commodity in let's say non reefer and reefer with non reefer the farmer can reach in a normal truck to like 900 kilometers and i will give you a live example today we do this we transport grape from maharashtra to delhi just by having pre cooling as a mechanism and using reefer and non reefer and in the farther market the commodity reaches very well i will give you a few more examples in the subsequent slide however if we usage the reefer he can reach up to 3000 km so you can one can imagine that the impact a farmer can get just by having pre cooling as an infrastructure at the farm and and if he usage air as a mode he can still get into export as a market so so the problem statement of pre cooling facility is not available at the farm energy is not available at the farm and to make this product convenient to the farming community we developed solar coal storages uh, and we patented it in india so we have filed 10 patents for this product for different technologies that we use as i told one of the innovation is here we don't use chemical batteries however it is stored in the form of thermal energy storage and today uh, i would like to say this product is such a sustainable that we use water as a medium to store energy so we don't use even any additives or chemicals uh, like uh, the use in a phase change material now one one part is okay we develop uh, this product and we decided to make this product portable reason is so that farmer can put this anywhere at the farm if he decides to change the location of cold storages one should get the accessibility to change the location so we so the blue uh, structure outside this cold storages it, it itself indicates that this unit can be portable it can move from one location to another location so we will develop this completely portable now to give a better service because for a farmer what is important they are afraid to use new technologies because they have a fear that if they use new technologies there will be a service challenges there will be a lot of maintenance challenges and to get out of that fear for the farmer we develop remote sensing and predictive analytics as a platform and i will i will show you that platform as well uh, you know a subsequent uh, slide so we capture today almost 120 parameters from these cold storages every 90 seconds and we understand different health of the cold storages and then we take a lot of preventive preventive action so we develop this remote monitoring as a solution and this is how the concept came out and then we commercialized this concept in uh, 2014 however it was not a very easy journey even though the value proposition for the farmers are right market at right time they can store commodities at the farm this has really helped to reduce wastage i will show you numbers as well and this has really helped many farmers to access to the further market so today we are present across india like maharashtra karnataka uh, even we are present in tamil nadu uh, andhra pradesh we have installed units with lot of fpos in fact somebody was mentioning today morning about shimla cherry so every year we give our cold storages in Shimla for the storage of cherries and cherry gets transported across India from Shimla using the cold storages. And then, two minutes. Please conclude yes, now. Yes, sir. So having uh, uh, having said that, even though we have developed uh, this type of capabilities with the help of uh, solar cold storages and post harvest management, today uh, we, we have uh, impacted uh, uh, many farmers i will just show you the impact side uh, we work with a lot of highly perishable commodities which are mentioned here and uh, this is one of the case study i would like to highlight here how farmers are getting 
confidence and benefit then sir i will end my presentation with a video that many farmers today use our cold storage they buy it from us we have developed leasing as a model because we realize that many seasonal commodities are there and many farmers cannot afford uh, this type of infrastructure so we lease out this cold storage this is one of the classic case study uh, from maharashtra where one of the farmer in yavat he stored a uh, loose flowers like chrysanthemum in cold storage just before the shara and diwali period where the rate was around 25 rupees per kg but just by having this type of infrastructure he sold at the right time like 200 rupees per kg earning 5 lakh rupees in 3 months so this is how economically there is a good impact happening uh, uh, farmers are reaching to the farther market and this is a final slide to conclude here so we have impacted 35000 farmers till date 16000 metric ton of solar cold storage infrastructure has been created and we have contributed to at least 12000 metric ton wastage as reduce uh, impacting a life of 300 people which is as equal to as and there are a lot of other environmental impact uh, so this is how we have impacted and we are making global impact today we are present in seven countries uh, we have recently started export in africa and southeast asia so having said that uh, i would like to close this presentation uh, with the help of a video and then uh, we can open up session uh, for the question and answers uh, is my screen uh, visible for the video yeah okay i will just play this video and we will close the presentation Okay, Mr. Dalai. Close, sir. I will close it here. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Is it over? Yeah, done, sir. Thank so, you very much. It's very heartening, heartening to see that technology innovation is okay, but application, you know, there are so many technologies. Developed at IITs and CFTR and all that, but application of the technology at the grassroots level is very very important. That is what yes. we have done. That is what you have done. In fact, hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. So maybe you can take on to the next speaker because we have limited time available. Uh, we can try and stretch it for uh, you know for twenty minutes for him. Okay, okay. I think hello. I think. Um, I invite Dr. Nachiket to make his presentation. I've already uh, you know, that, uh, introduced him as the director of CIPET. In fact, Dr. Vasudevapa in the beginning and Dr. Nachiket in the, in the concluding part, it makes complete end-to-end -end supply chain because in between there were two case studies. So the overall view we can get, we have already got from Dr. Vasudevapa now the again inclusive view of the topic we will get from Dr. Nachiket. I hand over to Dr. Nachiket, please. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Paul. And uh, thank you very much for introducing me and also setting up the base. Uh, the beginning. Mr. Paul, may I request you to put yourself on mute? Thank you, sir. Okay, I, I believe I'm audible. Yes, Hello. sir, you are. Please go ahead. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, I'll, I'll just make this uh, presentation. I'll try to be very quick. Uh, in fact, uh, what sir, I you will please be take speaking, your time. You have 20 minutes. No worries, sir. Yeah. What, what I will be speaking is uh, mostly repetition of uh, what the pace set by Dr. Vasudev Bappa and uh, Mr. Cole and some of the things uh, which uh, my previous speakers have also talked. Now, having said that, uh, uh, my earlier speakers, they talked about the losses, waste and losses. Uh, I'm just putting it in uh, in the perspective, in the visible form, so that uh, it, it gives a better uh, picture. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, things are the same. Uh, number one, when we say food loss and food waste, uh, there is a very thin boundary between that. I will come to that a little later. But uh, these losses are two types of losses, quantitative and qualitative. Uh, both are important. Both have bearing on the value of the product. Uh, quantitative losses, we have done the study, as uh, already told. Uh, CIFET uh, has worked on uh, two different studies, uh, one in 2004-05 and then later in 2014-15, we did again. And uh, we have come out with some alarming figures uh, on the losses. Uh, these figures are slightly contrary to the belief uh, that was in the picture uh, in the domain earlier and uh, then still they are very alarming uh, in the nature but anyway the losses the qualitative losses are also important and we have not uh, done any study as such for this and these qualitative losses like color size shape flavor etc these type of losses are also uh, have a great bearing on the uh, value of the commodity uh, coming again to the uh, values or the numbers. Uh, if the current uh, rate uh, food loss and wastages were cut by half by 2050, the we can save around 13, uh, 1,314 trillion kilocalories in food terms. Uh, so even if we can do it 50% by 2050. Uh, then uh, Contrary to the earlier picture presented, the losses at uh, food loss and waste both uh, are very high in case of the high income European and North American countries to the tune of 280 to 300 kg per capita. Whereas in uh, other countries, uh, they are 120 to 170 kg per capita. This is uh, different uh, uh, organizations have reported them. And uh, between 30 to 50 percent of all food produced on the planet is lost or not consumed. Uh, so, so these are these are some of the figures. And uh, this is a loss that goes during production and storage. And uh, contrary to a very popular belief that losses are more during storage, it's not. Storage losses uh, are probably only three percent. And these losses I'm talking of uh, before packaging pre-retail storage losses and uh, then production losses itself are very high uh, but they are not visible because they get distributed at different uh, stages uh, so uh, what is the value or what is the environmental impact of these uh, loss and waste uh, 23 to 20 percent 24 percent of loss uh, uh, is the water loss okay so that that how much water is lost because of uh, what is the value of water so this is the seven times of annual water discharge of river narmada uh, that is being lost just because of the loss of food then uh, 101.4 uh, billion hectares of land uh, the value of the loss is uh, uh, from uh, coming from 101.4 billion hectares Carbon footprint is something like 3.3 gigatons of carbon dioxide. And then at the same time, the waste aid food, when it is dumped in landfill, it creates approximately 25% uh, more harmful to ozone layer than the CO2. So this is this is the environmental impact of uh, the losses, food losses that we are uh, generating. Uh, 
ओवरऑल ग्लोबल सिनेरियो जापान साउथ कोरिया फिलीपींस ताइवान थाईलैंड दीज आर सम ऑफ द लॉसेस इन द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कमोडिटीज बट कमिंग बैक टू द वर्क दैट वी हैव डन एंड दीज आर द लॉसेस बिफोर द रिटेलिंग एंड मोस्टली दीज आर द लॉसेस व्हिच हैव बीन not estimated but measured at the farmers level uh, so losses in cereals are 5.99 to means you can say 4.5 to 6% in case of pulses 6.6 to 8.4% so these are the different uh, values of losses and as expected the maximum losses are in case of fruits uh, but again this is up to the farmers level and uh, even vegetables high losses are there then fishes meat uh, high losses are there whereas uh, in milk uh, the losses are quite less 0.92% if we come to the value of these so coming to 2014's uh, wholesale price index this is coming something like 92000 crore rupees per year and if we can say that some losses might have been reduced during this period of 4 or 4 to 5 years uh, but the value has increased so safely we can say that we are losing approximately 1 lakh crore rupees worth material of food every year now this is this is the value that government of india has put for agri infrastructure fund the total value of agri infrastructure fund is 1 lakh crore and that much we are losing every year in the in form of the food losses only i am not accounting for the wastage in this case this is only quantitative losses when we say qualitative losses that will add up and these are the losses in case of uh, vegetables uh, maximum in case of tomato uh, then in case of uh, fruits again maximum in case of guava and as you can see here that uh, the storage losses are less compared to the farm losses so the uh, key factor is that we have to do some intervention at the farm itself where the losses are taking place a huge amount of losses are taking so uh, what are the in general if i can say what are the solutions uh, so number one is on farm cleaning and grade uh, even in case of uh, durables even in case of perishables now it is very easy to understand that uh, if we are not cleaning things and we are, if we are storing things just like that packaging things just like that then whatever are the impurities they are going to cause a quicker loss or higher loss in case of uh, transit and even in case of storage number 1 number 2 we are unnecessarily spending money and uh, efforts on uh, storage of these uh, impurities and transportation of these impurities so it is very uh, logical to say that cleaning and grading at the farm level itself is the most param uh, is the paramount interest and uh, this has shown us uh, that farmers who are selling their product after cleaning or grading are getting better remunerative prices uh, compared to without cleaning and grading and uh, this this has been proven very well then on farm drying uh, especially in case of durables this is one of the major issues uh, which is causing different types of losses quantitative as well as qualitative when farm uh, farm produce is not stored at an appropriate uh, moisture content uh, remember that uh, there are three four ma three major things which are causing uh, any kind of losses during storage or or post harvest losses number one is moisture number two is temperature and number three is air so if you can control any one of these three uh, you are fairly uh, doing very well and this has been shown in our previous presentations where they are controlling temperature and they are reducing losses they are controlling atmosphere uh, or gases or uh, air and they are reducing losses so uh, so similarly moisture is also another uh, thing that needs to be controlled especially in case of uh, food grains because mind you the losses of food grains are uh, probably not visible fruits and vegetable losses are very much visible and everyone thinks of losses then they think of the fruits and vegetables but uh, the value of uh, losses in case of food grains and uh, uh, oil seeds and pulses that is also huge very high so that is one thing drying has to be appropriately addressed and an appropriate storage uh, now uh, added to that in case of uh, fruits and vegetables or horticulture commodities uh, pre cooling not necessarily vacuum but uh, any kind of pre cooling then individual packaging 
uh, packaging in trays or films or using appropriate plastics and then using of uh, rigid crates and all these things uh, th these type of some of the interventions uh, these are required which uh, have been shown already by uh, mr rawle uh, the technology advocated for post harvest losses establishment of cold chain so this is again in case of uh, uh, fruits and vegetables uh, cold chain establishment and pre cooling facilities uh, maturity indices now this this is another area which needs a uh, very well intervention of the industry as well as the research uh, that how do we identify uh, the crop uh, for harvesting uh, at an appropriate maturity you need to find uh, which is the appropriate maturity uh, I think there is a loss. What happened? Uh, I I lost it seems. Is it? Oh, no, it's okay. Okay, now now it's okay. All right. Uh, all right. So I'll, I'll just continue. Uh, I lost connection, it seems. Anyway, so I will very, very quickly, I will uh, go through some of the technologies which are available, which we say that are appropriate for farm level uh, processing. And uh, then uh, these are some of the cleaning grading uh, solutions, very inexpensive solutions, which can be owned by farmers. And uh, they, they do really wonderful job uh, of uh, cleaning and grading and that way uh, reducing the uh, material to be handled and also reducing the uh, storage losses. Uh, then coming to insect traps. Uh, these, this is a very small uh, intervention that uh, we have developed at TNAU, uh, a small uh, device that can be put inside a storage structure and uh, insects are getting trapped into this. Uh, this comes in a, this could be suitable for 25 to 50 kg bin and multiple devices can be put in a larger bins also. Uh, then coming to uh, drying, uh, solar drying is uh, open sun drying is the most common practice, but that leads to certain disadvantages. So these type of dryers, uh, which are transportation uh, table dryers, uh, they are available. We have developed them and they are available for different commodities. I am just taking some of the examples, not everything. Lot of things are available. Uh, millets uh, are one of the major crops, uh, uh, and we have developed this uh, small millet thresher, uh, which reduces the losses uh, during uh, threshing of millets and also reduces the drudgery. Uh, millet milling is also another operation that leads to a lot of losses in millets. Uh, we have uh, developed these type of machines. In fruits, uh, washing these type of solutions, small scale solutions, uh, which can be adopted by farmers. Large scale solutions are already available. These are some of the small scale solutions which can be adopted by the farmers. Graders, different capacity of graders, starting from 300 kg per hour, going up to even uh, something like 10 to 12 tons of uh, spherical fruits. So these are suitable for spherical fruits majority of the fruits and uh, some vegetables can be sorted using these type of grad uh, graders and uh, definitely because of sorting cleaning and grading uh, the value addition is there and farmers are getting a better remuneration to their crops when we talk of pre cooling or cooling uh, these are the things uh, dr vasudevappa was also talking about evaporative cooling uh, this is a kind of zero energy or minimum energy uh, cool rooms where uh, we are using the evaporation of water uh, for cooling of the structure and the temperature goes below 5 to 10 uh, 5 to 8 degrees celsius uh, less than the environmental temperature can be achieved and this can lead to a very good storage of uh, shelf life of around 34 days for quinoas and 11 days for cauliflower and spinach so variety of commodities can be stored into this then we have this another structure which is uh, not zero energy but uses some energy uh, for uh, uh, air movement and has a better efficiency and it gives 20 degree below the outside temperature 
and recently i have not included the photograph here iari has developed another system which runs on uh, solar uh, electricity solar pvc and that uh, gives you a temperature of 5 to 6 degree celsius while the outside temperature is something like 30 35 degree celsius so a very efficient systems have been designed uh, for uh, evaporative cooling of uh, so the total energy uh, in, uh, load is uh, not much and the capacity of 5 to 7 tons uh, can be achieved then these are some of the wrapping tools uh, individual wrapping of fruits vegetables uh, then uh, osmotic uh, dehydration so drying when we say as i told you in the beginning that temperature and air control is one thing but the age old method of preserving things is removing moisture and these are some of the examples of uh, osmotic dehydrated uh, products and these type of products are now coming very common and with a very appropriate and attractive packagings uh, they are being sold at a very high price so not only pineapple but papaya guava mango and so many kinds of uh, fruits they can be osmotically dehydrated and a very attractive products are uh, made available to replace the sugar candies and uh, such uh, high calorific value products so uh, then dried products also for northeast uh, these things have been uh, developed then coming to the urban market uh, minimal processing of vegetables this reduces the wastage at household level this reduces the pollution at household level and uh, this also gives a convenience value so value addition lot of value addition is there and because of this uh, a good entrepreneurship can be developed so vegetables cut vegetables uh, now this is another uh, pilot plant developed at uh, Bhopal for cut vegetables, minimally processed cut vegetables, wherein you are, we are not using any kind of harmful chemicals. Uh, this is the uh, majority of the things are only physical uh, preservation and uh, gives a very good uh, shelf life of around 10 to 12 days under refrigeration for the cut vegetables. Then coming to some fruits uh, that we have addressed is the uh, pomegranate, so aerial extraction, uh, this is a, a good uh, model. Uh, then uh, some other uh, things that, that we have uh, uh, addressed are uh, uh, different types of commodities like pool chamber. Uh, this is a mobile uh, platform. We also have another one. I don't have a photograph right now. But for vending of uh, 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 commodities like fishes or fruits or vegetables, these type of uh, small, small things can be introduced uh, in the farmer's field uh, so that the losses are reduced. So decentralized things. And then coming to the uh, processing of uh, durables, this is a concept of uh, mobile agro-processing center. I will uh, come to it uh, slightly again later. And this is another concept uh, that gives about, uh, talks about the agro-processing center, multi-commodity and uh, multi-processing, uh, multi-machinery processing center which can be used in a custom hiring fashion as well as as an enterprise. Uh, so one can have a cleaning section, one can have dal mill and oil mill and uh, grinding and can work on variety of products. It could be even rice mills. So depending on, on a location, uh, uh, one can have different types of machineries and these type of agro-processing centers can be functional on uh, as an enterprise, individual enterprise, as well as as a custom hiring. This is another model that uh, we developed uh, and established sometimes back in some tribal areas for millet processing. Now, as Dr. Vasudevappa was uh, talking earlier, that uh, because of this uh, pandemic and even otherwise also, people are now getting a little bit health conscious and some people are moving from our uh, staples like uh, rice and wheat to millets and uh, millets are really fetching a very good this becomes a very good enterprise where people have even uh, got a profit of somewhere uh, like 400 percent profit so these millets like uh, barnyard millet or finger millets or kodo or proso or different types of millets are there and they are being processed traditionally but huge losses are there uh, these losses can be reduced with appropriate mechanization and the use of appropriate machines and these type of millet processing centers with an investment of something like four to five lakhs on the machinery uh, can be established 
and uh, uh, this could also we have run it on uh, custom hiring as well as enterprise basis in tamil nadu as well as madhya pradesh so the solution comes uh, in in the form of uh, equipment ownership of, or custom hiring now government schemes like uh, small uh, mechaniz uh, this submission on agricultural mechanization that also supports uh, for owning of post harvest processing machines especially on farm processing machines uh, for that in certain machines uh, even uh, subsidies up to 40 to 60% are available uh, under the scheme uh, for which majority of the states uh, government of uh, state government with agriculture department is operating this and uh, that supports for equipment ownership as well as for equipment for custom hiring centers and uh, then agri infrastructure fund is also established which gives a very soft loan uh, for establishment of uh, large lot, lot of infrastructure for uh, pre cooling and uh, storages and cold storages and laboratories so <clears throat> uh, government schemes are there and uh, one can take advantage of these things Uh, but at the same time we have to see that we have to uh, promote uh, machines which are of good quality and appropriate machines uh, like uh, we have seen that cold storages uh, multi commodity cold storages need to be there or even whatever machines are being used they are to be used appropriately uh, so those things are to be looked into then sensors and automation in handling and storage this will definitely help Uh, with the uh, reducing manpower in agriculture day by day the manpower involved in agriculture is reducing and the manpower that goes away first is the one who is intelligent and who is uh, experienced so uh, they they can be replaced uh, with sensors and some automation is required for reduction of losses uh, then concern for quality has to be there and concern for Uh, loss and uh, uh, wastage uh, reduction is also has to be there so uh, as uh, al already said by mr paul and also by uh, dr vasudevappa that uh, initiative has to come from the consumers initiative have to come from all the stakeholders and then we at cfet we don't believe that there is anything waste uh, so we call everything as by products Uh, but uh, unless we have certain technologies for value addition to by products uh, there would be always things which will be just uh, thrown away as a waste so those type of technologies we are also working for extraction of very high value commodity from uh, these by products and then ultimately uh, nothing gets successful unless the empower we empower the stakeholders stakeholders need to know how to use the machines stakeholders need to know that what are the limitations of certain technologies and what are uh, what uh, what are the certain positives of uh, certain technologies and we need to empower them using all sorts of uh, things it could be training it could be uh, entrepreneurship development it could be development of apps and different information technologies use of appropriate information technologies so these these are certain uh, holistic uh, view of uh, the whole thing has to be done uh, as a solution and uh, again coming to very small or specific solutions is pre cooling physical chemical uh, treatment and uh, cold chain systems i am just repeating myself again uh, then uh, quality determination again non destructive determination modeling simulation so these are some of the research challenges that uh, we are we are addressing uh, at our institute uh, some of the things are getting repeated uh, so i think this was the last slide uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, i am there for uh, taking any questions if at all thank you thank you dr rajkin very good presentation and uh, we know one question have you have you transferred this technology of machinery to some uh, fabricators around punjab Whom, yes. uh, who could be approached by the entrepreneurs to get these machines, or it yes. they are at the research stage only? No, no. Ma majority of the things that I showed you, they have been transferred. That is that is very good. Now, yeah. in addition to this, I I want to add another one thing to this. You know, as you rightly said, and Dr. Vasudevapa rightly said, it is not only the food loss. According along with food loss. we are adding to the carbon footprint 
we are uh, losing water we are water resource we are losing land resource manpower resource and all that but in addition to that i'll tell you another thing say 1 lakh crore of loss if it is converted into value added product i will give a simple example according to your estimates cfet estimate we are losing potato about 8 million metric tons every year right despite being despite being the second largest producer of potato in the world despite being second largest producer in the world we are not recognized as a potato producing country because our contribution to international trade is dismal either in terms of fresh potato or processed potato right and if this is converted into value added products you see how much loss is there for example you take simple french fries for making 1 kg of french fries you need 2 kg of potato if mm. potato is 10 rupees a kg means 20 rupees and this french fry is purchased by you at 400 rupees per kg that's true you see what fantastic uh, amount we are losing everybody is losing so we have got by hook or by crook we have got to get together to prevent these losses right from farm right from farm to the retail chain and create consumer awareness with the consumer that they should not waste processed and cooked food that also is a big waste as yes we have because process, because processed and cooked food is not only the food waste but also the waste of energy water human uh, and everything labor and everything that's true that on one side on the other side we are facing 20 crore people in the country who are suffering from hunger malnutrition and everything so this mismatch has to be taken care of anyway thank you very much for a good presentation we had a wonderful session starting from one uh, luminary called dr vasudeva pa ending with another luminary called dr nachiket in between we had a two excellent case studies from jan irrigation particularly on banana which gave a particular insight for how to handle a particular commodity from end to end then a technology presentation by uh, ms by ravindra dolare ji who have shown us how the education innovative pro, innovative you know innovations innovative machinery innovative implements can be applied can be applied effectively on the ground award bay based system at the ground level excellent presentation excellent session i thank you very much vibhaji you can take over now from here right sir thank you very much sir for uh, so nicely moderating this session and my sincere thanks to uh, vice chancellor of neptim dr chindi vasu devapa ji dr nachiket kothi kothwari wale ji and uh, kishore wale ji and uh, Uh, Mr. Ravindra Dolare ji, thank you for some interesting uh, aspects and uh, some interesting presentations. And uh, we hope that uh, people get benefit from the case studies that you have uh, just shared, and uh, how to mitigate losses and damages. I hope they get uh, some, uh, you know, information and some benefit out of it. So with this, uh, we end session uh, technical session number four.